So now that we've done a very simple calculation of C of T, the concentration of virions in the air uh, per volume, uh, which is coming from just a mass balance in a well-mixed room, let's zoom in now and think about transmission between the infected person, or an infected person, and then a susceptible person who is not yet infected. And the transmission is occurring by breathing the infected droplets uh, in, and then the virus has to get out of those droplets and uh, interact with the, the host uh, tissues. So uh, if we let beta uh, be the transmission rate, so this is basically new infection uh, per time. So basically, it's the rate at which another person you know, may, become a, may become infected. Uh, then how would we write this? Well, we could write it as, so we're now forgetting about the infected person. We care about their breathing only because it's producing this concentration C that we just talked about. But now we're going to focus on the susceptible person. The susceptible person is now breathing in at the same flow rate QB, because the breathing in and breathing out are the same. Um, and so. QB is the volume uh, per time, around, let's say, 0.5 meters cubed per hour, uh, with which they're sampling the air. And the air comes in, and then C of T is the concentration of, of virions per volume. So this combination now tells me how many virions per time they're actually taking in. There'll be a quantity CI, which we mentioned earlier, which is the infectivity. And that's the probability that an individual virion actually causes this person to get sick and to become infected themselves. So, uh, so this is the infect infectivity of an individual virion. And then on top of that, uh, we also want to put in, I'll have to change the color to highlight it, the mask factor that we talked about earlier. So that's the transmission uh, or uh, penetration probability for the droplets of interest through the mask. These quantities, many of them will depend on size, and we'll come to that, uh, size of the droplet. But just as a rough uh, approximation, this is the starting point. So this is the number of uh, basically new infections per time. And there's a useful uh, um, notion in epidemiology, which is that of the infection quantum. So transmission rates are often written as infection quanta per time. And that is the rate at which a person which is susceptible will get infected. What we have not yet captured is if you have a finite number of people in the room, when someone gets infected, they can't get infected again. So the number of susceptible people is changing. So we have to model the progression of the disease in the room, uh, which we have not done yet. So that's why the beta is not the number of infected people, because eventually you run out of people to infect. right? So we have to account for that later. But a useful way to think of it is that beta is sort of the rate at which this person is sending infection quanta over here. Those quanta may not actually lead to an infection because they might already have been infected. But if they're susceptible, that tells you the rate at which that person would become infected. Okay? So that's the, uh, the notion of infection quanta is essentially defined by the transmission rate uh, beta. Okay? Um, now, this infectivity is something we'll come back to. Uh, we will actually go through the calculation for uh, SARS-CoV-2, but it's been estimated before to be at about 2% for the original SARS virus uh, in 2003. Um, and in fact, um, I will argue that it's greater than 10% uh, for SARS-CoV-2. And we'll do that by analyzing spreading data with the model. And of course, that helps to explain why SARS-CoV-2 has led to the COVID-19 pandemic, and SARS-CoV-1 was not uh, able to spread um, as much. So now we have here our transmission rate. And we can ask ourselves, this is a transmission rate which is time dependent. But what if now we uh, calculate the steady state transmission rate? So the transient would be when the infected person first enters the room, the concentration is changing in time in the air, but eventually there's kind of a steady state where there's a balance of the production and then the flow rate uh, through the room of refreshing the air with outdoor air. And in steady state, uh, we have the transmission uh, rate is gonna go to a constant value, which I'll call beta bar. And that is given 
by um, the steady state concentration. So here I'll just write as, well, I'll rewrite this expression here, QB uh, CIPM, and then the steady state C, which is the, um, the production rate P divided by the outdoor air flow rate Q. So, uh, and another way we can write that is that member Q we can write as lambda A times V. Uh, so this is uh, QB, and in fact, let me, well here, I'll just, I'll write it one more time this way, CI, PM, capital P, over lambda A, V. Okay. Now, recall that the P uh, we had written as, that's the production rate, also depends on QB, that's the rate at which the, the infected person is exhaling uh, infected air. So that was QB uh, times ND, the number of droplets per volume, VD, the volume of liquid in a droplet. So this ND, VD is the volume fraction of liquid. And then we needed CV, which was the concentration of virions in the liquid or in the fluid. And there's also a factor of PM if that person is wearing a mask. So when we put all this together, we get uh, kind of an important result here, which is that the steady state transmission rate can be written, when I plug in here, as QB squared times PM squared. So the mass factor comes in twice because if they are wearing masks, uh, you know, there's two masks. You have a mask at the source, you also have a mask at the target, and the fluid has to go through both of those filters. So that's one reason, as we'll see, that masks can be actually very effective. And then we'll lump all the parameters in something I'll call CQ, which I'll come back to, and then we'll leave lambda A, V in the denominator. So this is the uh, mean transmission rate, where I've defined this important parameter CQ, which has all the information about the specific disease. Now what is it? Is there everything else that's left? It's ND, VD. Uh, so that has to do with respiration. So the distribution of droplet sizes and the size of the droplets is something that's coming from the <clears throat> type of respiration that the infected person is engaging in. CV is their viral load, so it has to do with the progression of their disease and how many viruses or vi virions are found. And then we have CI, which is this infectivity, the probability that any one of those virions will actually infect the susceptible person if it manages to get in there and diffuse out of the droplets, okay? <clears throat> So coming back to this notion of infection quanta, while beta is an infection quanta per time, which are being kind of uh, transmitted from one infected person to one susceptible person, the way I've written it here is I've re-expressed it as infection quanta per volume of air exhaled. So while C is the, is the concentration of virions in the background, there's this CQ, which is essentially the infection quanta that are being released. And the factor of um, CVCI is actually what connects those two. In fact, sometimes we write CQ, little CQ is CVCI. This is infection uh, quanta uh, per liquid volume in a drop. So from, from the mucus or material that's being released, there's a certain concentration of infection quanta, which is the physical concentration of the virion CV times the probability that if they were to be sort of exposed to susceptible person's cells, that they would actually infect those cells and cause a transmission of the infection. So this is another important quantity. And this here is really the primary uh, sort of lumped or combined uh, disease and physiological parameter in the model. So the, what's nice about separating this way is that QB is something which has to do with people's activity. It's how fast they're breathing. And that's something we know very easily, whether they're at rest or they're exercising. PM is also known if we know the kinds of masks people are wearing. There's various studies of transmission factors and filtration efficiencies of masks. And so we can put reasonable estimates there. And then here we see the importance of lambda A, which is the air exchange rate. So how quickly is air, fresh air coming in the room? That's a physical parameter of the room, has nothing to do with the disease. And a V, of course, is a geometrical parameter of the room, which is the volume. And so all the disease aspects are kind of lumped into the CQ. So if I want to apply 
this to actual spreading of COVID-19, I have all these parameters that I know that come from the physics and fluid mechanics of the room, and then I have a single parameter CQ that I need to obtain uh, from an understanding of disease transmission and looking at spreading events in indoor situations.